Hello, welcome to Philly Philly. Welcome to my channel. Today, it's all about pumpkin. And while pumpkin is something a lot of us are familiar with, and we do think about the usual suspects like pumpkin bread, there's a lot of other things that pumpkin can be used for. And today, I'm just gonna touch on two other options. Um, but I did want to um, thank you for joining the stream. And this will be a little bit a, long, a little bit longer one, so feel free um, if you can only stay for a little, come back, check, see how we're doing. But we're going to be making three recipes with pumpkin, and one of them is actually a traditional one for us here in our family as we look to celebrating Thanksgiving here in the states next week. And that is the pumpkin bread that I make. So all across our country and across many countries a lot of people might have their favorite pumpkin bread recipe so this was one that i came across years ago when i was first married um, through a cookbook my sister had given me and i absolutely loved it and i've stuck with it ever since so it's become kind of a tradition and that's one thing that has never changed throughout the years um, for thanksgiving it's always been this one pumpkin bread that i've used so i'm going to be starting with the pumpkin bread but then once we get that in the oven we are going to be making a pumpkin butter now pumpkin butter can be used in a multitude of ways it involves no dairy so if you are dairy free this would be totally friendly for you it's a very flavorful dip spread that can be used um, in a variety of ways and we'll talk about that when we're making the pumpkin butter so we'll start with pumpkin bread the one the recipe that i always use and by the way that recipe isn't available on a link so i have um, typed it out all below. The pumpkin butter that I've made, I also found and it wasn't on a link, so I typed it out below. And, um, and then the last thing we're gonna round off with is what's going to be my hubs and my dinner tonight, and that is a cheesy baked pumpkin pasta. And it's actually quick and easy to use, and it's healthy. Um, and so it's, an, it's, a, it's quite a nice, actually great weeknight meal. And it just showcases our ingredient, which I'll bring it out here, our ingredient of the day, which is pu canned pumpkin. Um, now you could use, you could make your own canned pumpkin. You could use whole pumpkins. You could scoop out the middles. You could bake them and then you could puree it. You absolutely could do that. Um, but for how much pumpkin that we are using today, I'm going with the canned because I'm using it in a variety of ways. Uh, and so um, this is the route I'm going. And I'm also gonna talk about a couple other things pumpkin um, can be used for. And also some other, like we're just kind of the tip of the iceberg here. There's so many different ways that you can use pumpkin in other recipes, both savory and sweet. And actually for your pup, if you have a dog, at home, there's some ways that pumpkin can help there too. And we'll be touching on that. So, but first we wanna get this bread in the oven. So we are going to get started. So I'm gonna start with our pumpkin bread. This recipe again, as I mentioned, was from a cookbook um, that my sister had given me pretty soon after I got married. So I've been making this for definitely over 20 years for Thanksgiving and I always make two loaves at this time of year. I make one for Thanksgiving and I put one in the freezer for Christmas because my boys really love this pumpkin bread and, um, and actually we all do and we just love having a slice as a snack or even for a quick breakfast. So, um, so I always make two loaves and put one in the freezer. It freezes really well. So to start, we are gonna get our dry ingredients together. So down below you'll see the recipe for one um, loaf of pumpkin bread. I'm going to make two today, so don't get my measurements confused. Since I'm making two, I'm going to be doubling everything. So the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need, um, for the regular recipe, it's one and two third cup flour, but I'm going to be needing double that. So I'm going to be needing um, basically three and one third cup flour. I'm just doing my math here. Is that, yep, three and a, three and a third. So I'm going to get my flour measured and put into my big bowl. So if you are joining us, welcome, and please feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, I love chatting with uh, the friends who are popping by. Sometimes uh, friends like to just watch from afar and that's absolutely fine and I appreciate your support there too. Let me get something to help level this off. All right. So. So three and a third cups flour. One. Two. 
two. And if, you're our, if you are joining or if you're watching this video later, let me know below or in the chat right now, what are some of your favorite pumpkin recipes? That's three. And then I need a third cup. Oh, I didn't get that one out. Let me get a third cup. I know when I was growing up, um, one of the Christmas cookies my mom used to make was a, a pumpkin drop cookie and she put, I think it was like a cream cheese glaze on it. And she made so many Christmas cookies when I was growing up. It was one of my favorite times of the year just because we would have so many cookies in the house and it was so exciting. And every time, you know, at home when we'd have dinner, we'd be able to have a couple of the cookies. She'd make so many that there'd be plenty of time to enjoy even before the Christmas festivities. And, um, and if it was a weekend and we're eating lunch, we could have them after lunch too. So that was like double the joy. So I put three and a third cup flour in there. I'm done with my flour. To our dry mix, we are gonna be adding some baking powder, baking soda, and salt, and then some spices. So for our baking powder and baking soda, for my baking powder, I want one teaspoon of baking powder. But I'm gonna need two because I'm doubling it. And then for my baking soda, I'm gonna need the same. So since it's doubled, I need two. Let me put these aside. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna need some salt, and it calls for a quarter teaspoon, so I'll need a half teaspoon since I'm doubling it. There we go. And then my spices. So for my spices, I think one of the things I felt like this that set aside this pumpkin bread was the spice mixture. To me, it's what gave it a little bit more unique flavor than other um, pumpkin breads. Now, pumpkin bread recipes can have a variety of different spices, and I think that's where in lies you have um, favorites and preferences to different pumpkin bread. Some pumpkin bread have ginger in it, and in, and some pumpkin bread just use pumpkin pie spice, which which actually is, is fine, but from what I know about pumpkin pie spice, different pumpkin pie spice blends can have different spices in it. So there really isn't a, a lot of consistency, but it gives you that general, you know, fallish, warm spice flavors. In this recipe, the spices involve cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves, and it's all equal parts. And to me, the cloves in this recipe are what really set it apart. I just think it gives it that that little bit of something something that is a little bit special and different and just more um, it's like a deeper deeper flavor for me and one of the reasons i really love this recipe so since i'm doubling it i'm going to be using one teaspoon of all those spices so one teaspoon of cinnamon oh, i just added more cinnamon so it's overflowing here a little bit one second so i need one teaspoon of cinnamon one teaspoon of cloves and one teaspoon of nutmeg, and my teaspoon doesn't fit, so I'm gonna do two little half teaspoons. So that didn't fit, which is the reason I use my other measuring spoon sometimes because they have the the smooth, the um, longer one that fits. I'm also gonna do the same with my nutmeg. Let's see if this one fits. Yeah, this one fits, so I can just use my one teaspoon nutmeg and then my clove. And these are ground cloves, of course. That'd be a little chunky, right? Okay, so my ground cloves. And for those of you who caught the cocktail, um, the roasted cranberry clove cocktail earlier this week, you sprinkle cloves on cranberries and roast them at a high heat for just a few minutes. And then you add those to a regular simple syrup and you let them steep for an hour. And that infuses this flavor in the simple syrup with cranberry and clove. And that becomes a great um, flavored sweetener for different cocktails. And for me, I was putting it in with a sparkling wine that just made a really simple holiday cocktail. So if you didn't get a chance to check that out, please go back um, to my homepage and you can see I did a short about it. And also there was a live stream that um, you'll see a video for, for the roasted cranberry clove cocktail. Super yummy, a definite crowd pleaser. So I'm gonna put these things back over here. Put this over here. Let me get my flour out of the way. 
I already have my oven preheating because you know you always want your oven good and ready for when it's time to bake. So now that I have all my, oh, one more dry ingredient, the sugar. So the sugar, it'll take one and a half cups sugar. So here's my sugar. I'll need to double it, which will mean it'll be three cups sugar. I'm gonna get my flour out of this. Okay. Remember, this is for two loaves of bread. I feel like with sugar, you don't have to be as precise because it might just make it slightly less sweet, which won't be anything you'd even notice or be a problem. We're using up all the dry ingredients today. And one more. I'm just going to pour it, make it easy. Okay. There we go. So we doubled everything since we're doubling the recipe. It's back over there. And now I'm going to whisk together those dry ingredients. And I didn't, I don't have a glass bowl this big, so I'm using this one. So I'll show you the mixture. And it's good to whisk it together before you mix it with your wet ingredients because it kind of helps you not over mix it in the final stage. I just wanna make sure those spices are well mixed. There we go. Okay, and there you can see, we've got our mixture of flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, sugar, and all the yummy spices. And it smells wonderful. And actually, I'm gonna set aside just a little bit of this because one of the things this year for a surprise for my sons, my husband will be surprised because he's listening right now, is I'm going to be, for my Christmas one, I'm going to be adding some chocolate chips. So I don't know if this is happening in other parts of the world, but in the United States, especially I would say in the past five to ten years, you see pumpkin bread oftentimes with chocolate chips in it. And like there's nothing wrong with that, right? For Thanksgiving, what'd you say? <laughs> Blasphemy. So for Thanksgiving table, I don't want chocolate chips. Um, but you know, Christmas time, you're a little more decadent. You're kind of trying some different things. So what I'm going to do, because I, I don't know if this is an old wives tale, so maybe you can let me know what you've heard. But I've heard that if you're adding, you know, berries or chips, um, you know, chocolate chips, caramel chips, peanut butter chips, whatever kind of chips, it's good to toss them with some flour and then they won't all sink to the bottom of whatever batter you're putting them in. So is that what you've heard too? If so, let me know down below. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of my mixture. Actually, let me get my chocolate chips there first. And we're gonna put those, ah, they're hiding here. Now I'm gonna be opening these chocolate chips. So let's just set a timer to see how long it takes hubs to come over and to nab one of these chocolate chips because Kind of like Pavlov's dog. And here's the crinkle, crinkle. So I'm gonna put, I don't know, I probably have here like, oh, there he goes. Hey babe. Hey. I, I probably have like two thirds cup of chocolate chips here. And I'm just gonna add, and these are my favorite brands um, that I personally like using, Ghirardelli. This, these are their 60% um, bittersweet chocolate chips. I, I love this. I'm going to have, have a little bit. And Hubs is happy today because, well, he wasn't happy all day today because our favorite football team, the Eagles, were a bit of a hot mess, but they pulled out a win in the end, so he's in a much better mood than he would have been. So, mm, those are good. So, I'm just going to mix a little bit of my flour mixture here with them just so Hopefully they won't just sink. So we'll see if that works or not. I don't see that it's like coating them super much, but we'll just see. So I just I just tossed them. So they're just a little more dusty looking. And I think I think the theory scientifically is that dustiness from the flour on them creates more drag in the batter so they will stay better suspended. This is what I heard. But um, but I've never really done a side-by-side -side test, 
so I just don't know the validity. But that'll be for when we um, split it in half, I'll mix this, fold this into our um, bread batter that's gonna go for our Christmas bread. All right, so those are set aside. Um, hon, make sure I don't forget to add these, please, because like that would be such a new thing. I would have them all set, and I totally forget to add them at the end. And then everyone would be disappointed. We'd have all these funky chips with all this spicy flavored flour on them, which wouldn't really make much sense. Okay, so now the wet ingredients. The wet ingredients are going to involve our star, of course, canned pumpkin. And I'm going to open up my large can. So this one is a 29 ounce can. The reason I'm picking this is because I'm going to need two cups. And when you get one of the regular size can, it's just a wee bit shy. So um, I will be using the rest of this canned pumpkin for my furry friend here who's checking things out. And that's our Shelby girl. Shelby is our rescue, and she's a wonderful dog. And she's in her, she's in her, what do you call it, um, golden years? Is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> she's in her golden years. I don't know if they feel very golden to her, but that's where she is. She's, and in, her, she's in her 10 years. In her what years? 10. 10. Oh, poor girl. So I'm going to be putting, two, since I'm doubling the recipe, I'm going to be putting two cups of canned pumpkin and you know what I'm just gonna use this but um, so this is the other use that you can use for pumpkin if you have a furry friend first of all pumpkin is something that is not bad for dogs at all it's healthy for dogs and if your dog is having any um, is not regular uh, like if they're too regular if you get my drift um, this is supposed to help settle their system down and help it help things just look like more like they're supposed to let me just put it that way so um so we have done that when we go to the lake to visit my sister and her family in the summer both dogs drink a lot of lake water which has goodness knows what in it and so sometimes they get a little off in their systems and so what we do is we give that we add pumpkin to their food and it seems to help sort those things out. Well, that's, uh, don't talk about it, I'm not talking about it. I'm yeah. talking I'm talking around it. Right? I'm I'm talking around it. So pumpkin is healthy for dogs. So you can always so this is actually what we'll use the remainder of this pumpkin for because I think we'll have some leftovers besides the pumpkin butter and our pumpkin pasta we'll have some leftovers. Although I'll see maybe this will be enough. You know what this might be enough for me to use in my pumpkin pasta. I'll have to see. So we'll check it out. In any event, um we put two cups of pumpkin right there. Let me just get this, oh, uh oh, let me just get that rinsed out. Pumpkin for us is very healthy, as a matter of fact. It has, um, because of that bright orange color, it has a lot of, um, I think, is it the beta carotene? And actually helps, would you, I mean, there's lots of great vitamins it has in it. You, can you look up some of the other? health benefits as they say eat your rainbow or eat a rainbow right so you want to have all different colors in your diet and this never certainly you've never heard of eating rainbow oh my god oh because you're not a teacher that's why because that was the way of teaching nutrition was talking about having a rainbow on your plate lots of different colors and of course we like to tease our youngest son because he liked a he liked a white plate he liked um he liked rice chicken apples bananas potatoes, corn, that's yellow, but like there was not a lot of color in his plate. Um, so we would tease him, we would tease him all the time about that. All right, so to our wet ingredients, we've got our two cups canned pumpkin. I'm gonna be adding two eggs, um, actually make it four eggs, and we're gonna add double the oil, so it'll be one cup oil and double the water, so it'll be one cup of water. So let me go get those eggs. Can I say, rich, yeah. vitamins, rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, pumpkin is incredibly healthy. Incredibly healthy. And it has vitamin A, vitamin B2, vitamin C, vitamin E, iron, copper, manganese. Manganese, yeah. Uh, potassium, etc. Nice. So it's very healthy. Of course, we're making it a little less healthy, adding all the oil and sugar to it. Um, but, you know, this is, of course, a special occasion a special treat and we all need to treat ourselves sometimes right 
So I'm going to add my eggs and actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll get my eggs in here. I have four eggs. That was a really bad crack, by the way. There we go. That was better. Two. It always is good, as I mentioned, to crack your eggs in a separate um, cup or something before you add it to your batter because if there's a bad egg, again, never have had a bad egg, but you would see it. So I've got my four eggs. I'm gonna add those. And then I'm going to be also adding one cup of vegetable oil and one cup of water. So I'm gonna add the water last and I'll tell you why. Let me get my vegetable oil here. One cup. Now I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna go a little shy of a cup. I always do this because it always seems like, even when I'm making, um, even when I'm making one, a whole half cup, it just seems like a lot of oil. So I, I went a little shy. It's just what I do. You do you, but it always kind of freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> so I go a little shy. And it always tastes super fine. So I'm not really worried about that, I will tell you. Um, and then, oh, so now this is what I do, especially with doubling it. If you're not doubling it, this is not as a big an issue. But with doubling it, and it's definitely a bigger issue. So what I'm going to do here with my pumpkin, eggs, and oil is I'm actually going to get it going now because when you add the water, it just becomes so watery that it's just a lot to manage and swish around. Now you can absolutely use a mixer for this. You could use a hand mixer. You could use this, a stand mixer. And you know I've got my favorite KitchenAid stand mixer. However, I also... First of all, our KitchenAid is super heavy and it's in a closet and then I have to get it out. And this is honestly really easy to mix by hand. So I I just mix it by hand because I'm lazy and it's easy. So I'm gonna get a cup of water. So make sure that's measured. <coughs> Ten more. Let me see. Yep. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add this slowly to help incorporate it into the rest of the liquid ingredients. So that's kind of what I do. And by the way, I, if you notice, I'm wearing a charcoal gray shirt and that is on purpose because orange, or not orange, um, pumpkin is a very deep orange and it can stain a little bit that those pigments that are so healthy and beautiful. So I was not going to take any chances with all of this pumpkin stuff. Okay, so now I have my wet ingredients and I have my dry ingredients, and now we are mixing them together. Let me just put this aside. So we're just combining them. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna use that yet. I'm gonna use this first. We're just combining them. Oh, it smells so good. I will tell you. Oh my gosh. I love all of those warm spices. Like first of all, that, that is just awesome, right? And I'm just mixing. I'm gonna be careful to mix because we've got a lot of flour that went down there. And you're gonna mix it until it's smooth. I'm gonna get my whisk in there in a minute. But I just kinda wanna get it started. And I'm not gonna over mix. But since I had already mixed both parts, it's gonna come together quite quick. The only thing I wanna make sure about is on the bottom that we don't get any flour pockets. Because sometimes in a big mixture like this, you can have the, that pocket of flour that doesn't get mixed properly, and we don't want that to happen. I'm just gonna whisk it around. And you know, I'm using my smaller one because my bigger one is just too floppy. So, not, not super happy about that. I think we're about there. It's pretty smooth. I'm just gonna check and make sure there's no flour pockets on the bottom, let's see. Let's do, oh, there is a little one. See, that's why you always check. You always look on the bottom. Because what happens is you're dumping your batter into a loaf pan and at the end all this flour pops out. And I've had that happen, this is why I look. And then it just uh, kind of, you have a problem spot in your loaf of bread. Nice, okay, this is beautiful. So. Let me just tidy up a little bit because I'm gonna now pour this into the loaf pans and get them in and taste this. Oh, mm. 
Oh, that's so good. I'm a batter girl. So I don't know if anyone else grew up with eating batter like I did as a child. And we never went to the hospital because of it. I know everyone's freaked about eggs right now, but not just right now, like for years now. But watch it, there's a little part that's gonna move. But there is nothing like like a like a beater or a whisk or whatever that your mom or dad was using to make something. Like that to me is childhood. Ch childhood is licking those beaters. Right, babe? Well, hopefully you don't have to take them to the hospital. Yeah, I'm not I'm not expecting to. All right, so let me tidy up a little bit. Just get some of this, because we have much more to do, but we're almost ready to get this bread in the oven. Now, um, my oven, as I said, was preheating. I have convection. A regular oven, you'd be preheating, preheating at 350. Since it's my convection, I'm going 25 degrees less, so it's at 325. I'm not gonna forget my chocolate chips. I'm saying that out loud so I don't forget. <laughs> Um, and then what I'm gonna do here is I have my two loaf pans and I was gonna cut out some um, parchment paper to put at the bottom. What I've learned that because pumpkin bread is just so moist, at least maybe it's the one that I use, sometimes I have had trouble when I've removed the pumpkin bread from the pan. There's like a little section in the middle that clings. And then, and then of course, you're, you know, kind of is a little bit ruined there. Like I can kind of scoop it out, put it back, flip it over, but I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not exactly how I want it to be. So ever since that happened years ago, I've always wanted to line my, um, my pans with par parchment paper because then it won't happen. Like then it's just, you're gonna, everything's gonna come out the way it should. And again, like this, isn't just an impromptu banana bread for the family. Like this is for a Thanksgiving meal and then it's also gonna be for when we're celebrating Christmas. So what I do is I'll take my nonstick cooking spray and I'm just, that one's almost out so I'm gonna stop that one. And I'm gonna just do both pans. There we go, that's better. And then to ensure, call this my insurance policy, I'm putting some parchment paper. Now one of the th things I was really excited about was we got a new air fryer. Um, we got the tradi more traditional basket style and I bought these for times that I was ever worried about like something that was gonna like make too much of a mess. Um, and so these actually fit perfect. So I am gonna use these in my pumpkin bread. And I say they fit perfect, but actually they are just a wee bit big. So I'm gonna actually cut this other one. I'm gonna cut it just a tad. I smoothed everything down so it's fine, but I'm gonna just cut it real quick. Actually, what I can do is I'm gonna take this, just make it easier. I'm just gonna trim. Trim this right up because the edges come out no problem. It's the middle. It's the middle that's the problem. Let me open this up. Put this fella down. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. And now my pans are ready and I will have no sticking. Everything will come out smoothly. Shelby's making sure I didn't drop anything. I did not drop anything, girl. And now I'm just gonna eyeball this, try to get these um, into equal into the pan, but you know what I need to do is um, I need to set aside some of this to add my uh, chocolate chips to. So I'm gonna try to eyeball this like without having to add more. So let's see how we do. All right. See how much that is, how much that is. Eh. Give it one more wallop. Okay. Now we'll add the chips. We'll see how I did. Get the chips there. Fold those in. Okay. Now let's see how I did. Let's get this in here. 
Hello Messy edge here. Tidy that up. Yeah, I didn't do too bad. This one's a wee bit bigger, but also has the chips in there, so maybe that's part of it. So it might need to cook just a little bit longer than my other one, but not too bad, all things considered. Just gonna smooth the top a little bit. Oh my goodness, there we go. Okay, and I did have a little bit of a mess here. Let's get that cleaned up. Let's see. And, oh goodness, that didn't work. All right. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So we have our two loaf pans. Let me rinse. They're actually pretty good. They're pretty close. My chips one is just a slight bit more full. Um, but I'll just have to make sure I make sure both of these are cooked enough. Um, they are going to go in the oven. For, so if it's at 350 regular oven, it'll be going in for an hour, but do keep an eye on them and check them. Um, and for my convection, I'll check them at 50 minutes. So let me get these put in. And again, you want that preheated. There we go. Set my timer. Excellent, okay. And then I think I'm going to have to taste this again. Mm. Oh, that's so good. And I think I'm going to have to taste this again. And if you want to taste it again, sweet too. It's right there. Okay. That looks good. You're welcome. All right. So pumpkin recipe number one is cooking. Pumpkin net recipe number two is going to be pumpkin butter. So pumpkin butter is a, is a very similar condiment as apple butter. So if you're familiar with apple butter, Pumpkin butter is something very similar, but with pumpkin. And basically they are spreads and they have the concentrated flavor with apple, it's the fruit, with pumpkin, it's the squash, I guess you'd say, the vegetable. And um, they are great for spreads. They're great on like an English muffin or any bread, honestly. They're really great to get inventive. You could use it on a cheese board as something to, you know, if you're using some cheeses, they're a great thing to also add, you know, on a cracker uh, with some different cheeses. Uh, they also, pumpkin butter can be mixed with cream cheese to make a great spread that could be, or something that could be dipped, you know, um, by, um, you know, pieces of fruit or even crackers. So it's something that can be used a lot of different ways for flavoring. And it's really delicious, it's really good. I mean, actually you could make a really fancy sandwich or even a grilled cheese using that as the spread and then maybe hitting it with some different savory meats and cheeses and then maybe a little spice. Like it, you play around with those flavors. Um, there's so many different things you can use it for. And it's delicious, it's great to have at the table, especially for, um, for Thanksgiving. When you do make pumpkin butter, it can keep, um, I did look this up and I put this down below. Pumpkin butter, once you make it, keeps for um, refrigerated for up to a month. And then you could also put in the freezer for six months. So my thoughts with the stuff I make today is I will, you know, make some for Thanksgiving next week. Uh, you know, kind of, it'll hang around for like a week or two, and then I'm going to freeze the rest until it gets closer to Christmas, and then we can enjoy it for a few weeks around Christmas time. Because I don't expect, especially with just being hubs and I, that we're gonna go through it super quick. It'll be more when we have company, but it's a great thing to have out, again, when you're entertaining, whether it's breakfast, brunch, or appetizers, you know, or as a spread with some breads and rolls. So I'm gonna get our pumpkin butter started, and it's going to involve the pump the canned pumpkin the pumpkin puree and as well as brown sugar apple cider cinnamon ginger nutmeg allspice and cloves so some very similar spices as what we had before i'm going to bring those back with the addition of ginger and i mentioned that some pumpkin breads actually have ginger we get our pumpkin i'm just going to get water in this Absolutely, and some brown sugar. So I've got my brown sugar. 
and um, apple cider. So it's kind of funny that, and this is just the recipe I came across years ago. I made it, last time I made it, we were in the suburbs, um, and it was super easy, and I think that's the thing that struck me was how easy it is. You can also do this recipe, and I put the directions below in a slow cooker, so you can just fix it and forget it. Um, but it's super easy to make, and, and it does intensify the longer it's on the stove and reduces, so that is what we are going to do first. We are, in fact, while we're doing that, I'm actually going to set our pasta pot. Can I just fill it with some water, with cold yeah. water real quick, and you can do what you're going to do. That's no, I'm fine. Good. Okay, thank you. Want cold water? Yes, please. As you know, my trick, since we have pasta coming up, is to get my pasta water boiling ahead of when I need it, because you can always turn the heat off, and then it'll be ready in just a few minutes when you're ready to put your pasta what you, in. What are you doing with this? It's going to go in our pumpkin butter recipe. Really? Yeah. I don't think I knew that. There's so, there's so many things you don't know to yeah. hear. <laughs> All right. Someone clues. No, nah, it's okay. We just keep things a mystery for you. It's not, not really difficult. <laughs> okay, so we can get that. I'm going to cough a second. <coughs> so It's amazing. Even feeling so much better that you st I still have this lingering cough. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my ingredients. So instead of trying to make sure measure this out, I'd rather save this for my pasta recipe. So I'm going to, because I know this is exactly what they need for um, the pumpkin butter. And this is a, let me just read it, um, a 15 ounce can of, no, 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 I'm wrong. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry about that, friends. I am mistaken. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay, I had my blonde dits moment. Sorry, blondes, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm insulting myself in the, I forgot that my big old pumpkin thing was right in front of me. So you do need a big container. This is a. <coughs> did you remember the chocolate chips? I did. Okay. So you weren't listening at all, were you, babe? No. No, okay. So I do need this 29 ounce um, container for my pumpkin butter. Or it says, or three and a half cups of homemade. And I feel a little tickle, I need my water. <coughs> you want to take over? You want to take, oh yeah, will you do the rest of the cooking? Thank you, you're so kind. So if you're just joining us, we just put pumpkin bread in the oven, and it's the pumpkin bread recipe that I've used for over 20 years. It was from a cookbook called uh, Not Just Another Tea Party, and it's called Pilgrim Pumpkin Bread. Not that it's the pumpkin bread that pilgrims really used. I think they just thought it was a cute name. Um, you know, we kind of get, we all get into that, right? Oh, it says Pilgrim Pumpkin Bread, I'm gonna make it. I actually was just, you know, it's, it was the beginning of, my cooking travails with my husband and I think I was just like I knew I wanted to find like a good pumpkin bread recipe and then when I tried it I loved it. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to get it in here. It's my trusty spatula. <clears throat> a whole lot. I got a lot of pumpkin today at the grocery store. Not today. On Friday. And with the way things have been going with supply issues after once the pandemic had happened, I'm always, I was a little worried because out, I think actually during um, 2020, there was a big issue finding pumpkin. There was like this problem and this, I mean, there were so many problems finding things during the pandemic, but I remember that being one of them. So it's just, I think that's kind of, to me, the, some of the trauma left over from 2020 is just like, do you think they'll have it on the shelves? Whereas I will say before then, I never really worried about much being on the shelves. And it really made you realize you have to, you have to kind of like be very appreciative. All right. So to our canned pumpkin, we're going to be adding one and a half cups brown sugar. So add some sweetness. All right. I'm just going to use this, I think. And of course, with brown sugar, you want to make sure you pack it in so that it gets measured. I'm taking my little sugar saver out. Let's keep it moist. What's a little sugar saver? What, what is that? 
It's um, terracotta, and I just I got it the other week because our sugar always dries out and gets too hard, uh -huh. and um, apparently it's supposed to help keep it moist. Cool. So we'll see, right? Is it the same way it's working? Yeah, but I've I mean I've only had it in there a week, uh, okay. but. You know, we always have brown sugar, and it always seems like it does fine, and then all of a sudden it gets really hard and dry, and then you have to try to reconstitute. It's just this big problem. Yeah, so again, never heard of that. I know, and I thought if this does work, I thought that'd be great stocking stuffers for my foodie family, you know? Yeah. Because I do feel like there were times that I would be using a recipe and I wouldn't have used brown sugar in a while. And all of a sudden I go in and it would be rock hard. And, and there are ways around it. And you can actually, the way I found out how to fix that was I Googled what to do and I forget what all the hacks are. So you don't have to totally despair, but it is a pain in the butt. So to just prevent it from being hard in the first place, I thought this was a good idea. So I'm definitely, it was up for trying this. So I'm gonna put my sugar saver back in there to help keep the rest of my brown sugar moist. One of the things I, I do try to do to help prevent brown sugar from drying out is put it in a different container, put it in a better airtight container than the bag it's in or whatnot. So I just measured out one and a half cups brown sugar and I'm just gonna just gently mix it a little bit. It doesn't need to be fully mixed, but just so I don't have a pile of all this, of all this stuff. Okay, and I'm also gonna be putting in then three quarter cup apple cider. Oh, and I never use this, so I can use this now. Great. Three quarter cup apple cider. Oh, and I should let me just mix this up. Apple cider tends to settle. Okay, three quarter cup. Oh, there. Will you ask Matt to check out the chat if he can? Because I'm getting spammed. So. <clears throat> That's the first time that's happened, which is not too shabby considering that I've been up and running since, but was it February or March that I had the first stream this past year? All right, so there's my apple cider. Let's see if my son can help with that. All right, so um, I'm taking my three quarter cup apple cider and just adding it. So we're just doing our mixture right here in the pot we're going to be cooking it in. And then to this we're going to add our spices. So we're going to be adding cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, allspice, and cloves. And quite aggressive amounts of it. Um, less of the allspice and cloves, but three teaspoons of cinnamon, which is quite a bit of cinnamon. So let's get that added. Whoopsie. Okay, get my cinnamon. And of course, I'm going to actually just put it in here because we know that I, this one doesn't fit in my cinnamon. So actually, you know what? I'm going to remedy that right now. I'm going to get my one that has the slender fit so I don't have to keep doing this. We should have used them in the first place. Let's see. Okay. But anyways, as I, I digress, when we're talking... Um, if you just join us, we have two loaves of bread in the oven and we're making pumpkin butter. So we're going to be mixing it up and putting it on the stove to cook while we're doing our pasta. So I'm going to get three teaspoons of cinnamon. One, two, three. And then I'm going to put in two teaspoons of ginger. Let's see, my ginger's in this weird like spice box thing, so it's gonna be a little harder getting out. So we're getting two of those. One, two, there it worked. So the ginger really adds a different nuance to it. And then one teaspoon of nutmeg. Here's my nutmeg. One. And then a half teaspoon of allspice and a half teaspoon of cloves. Oh, take that off. All these warm spices. Half teaspoon of allspice. 
half a teaspoon of cloves. And I've heard that, um, here's my cloves. I've heard that, I was reading up about allspice the other day, just because you know that's what I do because I'm a little bit crazy foodie wise. And um, allspice is apparently, and I, I really never, in fact, let me smell it while I'm here now. It's one of those spices part of the reason it got its name apparently is because because it can be substituted for a lot of different spices because it just has a jet more of a general warm spice flavor whereas cinnamon goes one direction nutmeg goes another direction cloves go another direction but apparently it can be used as a substitute substitute for some which i thought was really funny which is i think why it got its name all spice i think it's funny all right let me just get this tidied up a little bit Put this over Okay, so I'm just going to do a mix here. It doesn't have to be perfect because, like I said, you're going to be stirring and mixing as it's cooking. But I just want it generally combined. And it's creating this dark. Let me smell it. Oh, it's just a very complex smell, and it's not even cooking yet. But you're getting a start. When you first smell this, you'll get a start of what you're going to end up with which is going to be really yummy. Oh, please tell. He bought, he bought, he, uh, tell him I'm so appreciative. Thank you, Maddie. All right, so I'm going to save this because I can be using it to stir. So I'm just going to, over on my stove, in fact, I'm going to get my little thing going because we're going to be making our pasta soon. Get this over there. So over on my stove, um, I'm going to be putting this on and simmering it. Um, for 30 minutes, but first I need to bring it to a boil. So this is the part that we are gonna to have to watch carefully because any of you who have ever brought thick mixtures to boils, <laughs> I can attest that when they boil, I don't know if you can see that at all. Yeah, you can't see that much now. Um, the real show will be when we're doing our pasta. But when you bring those mixtures, big mixtures to boils, because I think of polenta and I think of grits with those thicker mixtures, the bubble is so big and it plurps out and then that stuff is hot that comes out and it just kind of makes a real mess. So you just, my advice is you kind of want to watch this while it's coming to a boil initially. And in fact, I'm going to put a lid on it because that's the other protective thing you can do is get a lid on it. Longer until that bread. What's that? Much longer until that bread's there. The bread is has another 34 minutes. Is it real? Yep. Do you think it's longer or shorter than you thought? Shorter. You thought it would be shorter? It was like five minutes. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I don't know if I'll need this, I'm just gonna put this over here. And I think, oh, we are boiling, our water's boiling, so I can turn off my pasta pot. I don't need it quite yet. I'm going to take these, and I don't think I'm going to need these for, yeah, I don't need them. I'll, I'll keep a tablespoon. Actually, I will keep this one. And then just tidy up my space a little bit. Are we allowed to have any of that bread? Um, well, we, we kind of talked about this already. Do you remember what we talked about, my love? Kind of. So Hubs was asking if he can have any of the bread. So you know, if you've been coming to my streams, you know that uh, we always can, um, we always try the things at the end of our streams. That's part of like the fun of it is also trying and we can let you know how it, how it is. Of course, we are always trying to make good recipes for you to enjoy, but we want you to see the finished product and see us enjoying the finished product. However, because this finished product for the pumpkin bread is for two holidays. We will not be trying it today because I, do, I don't want to break into the bread that's going on our Thanksgiving table as well as the bread going um, for Christmas because it's going to get frozen. So uh, what we will do is we will I will pop them out of the pans, show you the finished product because they will need to, when you take anything like a baked bread out of, out of the oven, uh, quick bread, you need to let it sit for, cool for about 10 minutes pop it out of the pan and then let it cool the rest of the way so we will definitely show you what that all looks like and then um i will if you follow me on twitter philly philly live and again as i say i know 
we don't, none of us know really how long Twitter will be with us. But for right now, that's where you can find me. And that's where I post about my schedule and I post a lot of food pictures. And I'm sure I'll be sharing some pictures of Thanksgiving. Um, so that's where you can find maybe some pictures of the bread when it's out on the plate. All right, so let's check and see if it's boiling yet. Yes, it's just starting to. Okay, so it's just starting to, so I'm going to reduce it right now. So let me kind of show you, I'll bring it over. So it just started to bubble around the edges. And then I want it on low. And I believe we keep the lid off because we want the, it to actually reduce. Let me just check my recipe. One second. Uh, put that back there. Let me just check. Um, one second here. Yes. Simmer. Simmer the pumpkin butter for 30 minutes or until it thickens, okay? Gotcha. And if you notice, so it's funny, um, I love the description of when, when you'll know your pumpkin butter is thick enough. And this is a description that we've talked about with other sauces when I've done some different streams. So one of the things they say is you wanna simmer your pumpkin butter until when you draw a spoon across it, it doesn't immediately fill in. So it keeps like that alleyway you just created. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to reduce it, thicken it, um, and which will deepen the flavor, intensify the flavor, make it just amazing. It really, pumpkin butter is a delicious, delicious um, product and condiment that you can use, as I mentioned, in a lot of ways. So that's what we're looking for. Now, as you all know, we have a terrible simmer um, on their stove, so I'm sure I'll be spending a lot of time checking it, moving it, turning it off, turning it back on, but that's okay because we're going to be doing some other things, so I'll be over here. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to taste what we have so far. Mmm. Yum. So even what we have so far is really good and it's not even reduced and made into the um, deliciousness that it's going to be, but it's all good flavors. The last thing I'm making is not sweet. It is not going to be anything for desserts or sweets, although as I said, pumpkin butter could be used in some savory elements. I'm making a pasta that I made. Um, it's a skinny taste recipe. You know I love uh, Gina and her skinny taste recipes. It's a great um, meal that can be on your rotation a lot because it's healthy. It uses whole wheat pasta. In fact, yeah, see, my <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna put this to the side a little bit because already it's just, oh my goodness, already it's just like not simmering properly. The stove is gonna be an issue. But back to the recipe. So. Um, she recommends using Delalo whole wheat pasta. As you might know, if you, first of all, you don't have to use whole wheat pasta. I like opportunities to use whole wheat pasta in, in different applications. Like for me, I would never use whole wheat when I'm having spaghetti and meatballs. I prefer, I don't prefer whole wheat in that kind of recipe, but I do like whole wheat pasta and other recipes where it really plays off its nuttiness and its flavor and becomes a super delicious dish. So she really likes Delalo whole wheat pasta. I have personally um, Chiqueco, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, it's an Italian pasta. I love all of their pastas. This is just a great brand of pasta that's consistent and delicious, has great um, you know, texture. It, you can cook it al dente. And so that's what I'll be using for this recipe is, is this one. But there's, there's you know, many other brands that have some good whole wheat pasta. So just kind of see what your favorite is or look up recommendations. Um, if you can't find this one or Delalo that Gina recommends, see if you can look up some other ones. You know, look it up on Google and see what some other brands are supposed to be good. But this is one we usually use. So we're gonna be using um, that penne. Let me just do a quick stir while I'm over here. And, the other ingredients, I'm gonna bring over my cutting board. The other ingredients are going to involve um, a shallot, some fresh rosemary, some pumpkin, of course. Let me bring our pumpkin over. Some chicken broth. 
and um, Pecorino Romano cheese, mozzarella cheese. Salt, pepper, and what else am I forgetting here? Oh, something really important. Bacon, although I'm not using bacon today, I'm using pancetta. So you can use bacon, pancetta. Um, I just, you know, it's really whatever you have handy. If you didn't, if you wanted to keep it um, vegetarian, you could leave that out. So uh, this obviously imparts a lot of flavor but it is, it does take away its ability to be vegetarian. So in any event, um, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna get these prepped and then we're gonna start sauteing. So let me get my pan at least warming. Okay, get that warming. I'm gonna move my little pan here a little bit. All right, okay. So, get my shallot ready. Now, you could use an onion if you don't have a shallot. Um, if you've watched my streams before, you know I love shallots. I love, I, I use onions too and other things, but in a dish like this, some of the little flavors, the little decisions, just contribute to make a really tasty dish. And I feel like the shallot just gives a certain subtlety and flavor that makes it for a very delicious um, end product. So I'm just gonna be chopping my shallot. There we go. Okay, got my chopped shallot. I just need one half a teaspoon of rosemary, so it's not a lot, so I'll just take one spray. As you know, rose, or if you don't know, rosemary little goes a long way. Um, I'm just gonna chop this whole sprig and then eyeball what I wanna use. I love fresh rosemary in recipes, so, I would have no problem using a little more rosemary than they call for, but you do it to your taste. So I'm just gonna get this all minced up. As you can see. Just run your knife through it. Just wanted to get smaller pieces. Oh, it smells so good. You know, it's what I love about cooking is, and of course we're in fall right now here in the States, is our, our herbs and our spices, they all contribute to the experience we're having during different seasons. And to me, rosemary just speaks of winter and fall. Obviously it can be used all times during the year, but there's something about it that completely evokes that whole like, it's just this time of year and this, these dishes that I love. So what we're gonna do is I've started heating up my pan and I'm just gonna be adding, she doesn't really say how much, so I'm not gonna, obviously this is way too much pancetta for our purposes. So I'm just gonna add a couple of spoonfuls of this pancetta because we're just trying to get to flavor. This is gonna be a pasta dish that really just is for serving, so it's not a big, big pasta dish. I can smell my bread already, by the way. Talk about the yummy smells that are going to be coming from here. I'm probably going to steal some of it. You think you're going to steal some of it? Yeah. You got to get it. You got to get uh, around me, though, babe. You know. We'll see. We'll keep you posted on that. So I've got my pancetta starting to render. Um, I'm going to just actually. Wait a second. I'm gonna actually just add a little bit of olive oil. You don't, the recipe doesn't call for this, but just to help things get going. And then the container I'm gonna be using today, I'm actually gonna be cooking this in my air fryer because we're using my oven at a different temperature that I'm gonna need for, for this. Um, this one's gonna be at 375. And I know um, that that's close, but it'll also cook it a little quicker so that we can kind of get dinner on the table a little bit faster. 
So I'm actually, let me get this plugged in so it's ready to get preheated when it's time. But I'm gonna get my little cake pan out. Because I know this cake pan fits right here in my, fits perfectly in my air fryer. So that's gonna be cooking it in. And I'm also gonna get this sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray so that nothing sticks. So if I wasn't using this, I'd be using a, um, I think an eight by eight or a nine by nine baking pan. So mine's probably gonna be a little bit higher because I'm using a different size dish, but I think it's gonna be just fine. Let me check. I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit. It smells delicious. You can see that going there. Um, so I've got my pancetta rendering um, over the heat, and I'm going to add my shallot to that. Let that brown up. Go. Oh my goodness. I'm add a little salt and pepper. Where did I put my salt? Oh, here it is. My benchette already has a little salt. I'm going to Check out my pumpkin butter. Do a little stirring since my simmer is not working super well, so I'm keeping a definite eye on it. My pumpkin butter is continuing to cook. Um, so we're gonna let this cook for just a few minutes, and then we're gonna be adding the pumpkin, the chicken broth, the rosemary, and some of the cheese, and let it simmer for eight to 10 minutes. So let's let th this onion soften, or this shallot soften. building some yummy flavors and I think this pumpkin actually will be fine I think this will be just about enough and I think it'll do I think it'll do just fine that is my that's my thought with that I think I think our shallots are just about ready all right so we're gonna add the pumpkin adding the pumpkin and then we're also going to be adding this our our chicken broth I'm going to do it slowly so I can kind of mix it as it goes Stir my pumpkin butter. Go. I'm going to turn up my heat on my pumpkin for my pasta. And I'm actually going to get my, wait a second here, my pasta water back boiling because I'm going to put my pasta in to cook. That should come up super quick. And my pumpkin's already starting to blurt. And to that, I don't want to forget, I want to add three tablespoons of Pecorino Romano and then my salt and pepper and my rosemary. So I've got my rosemary. Don't forget the chocolate chips. <laughs> and the chocolate chips. Don't listen to them. So get some my Pecorino. The rest of my pecorino. 
pecorino I'm going to be adding to the topping. So I'm actually going to add my cheese, my mozzarella cheese, because I have just about a quarter cup of pecorino in there. I'm going to add my mozzarella cheese, my half cup of mozzarella cheese, my pecorino, and that's going to be my topping. All right. Put that there. Get this stirred up. You can tell the dog is very hungry. She's pacing now. I gave her a nice big treat before the stream. She's got her nails cut too. I know. Unfortunately, it's only I that can do it and Mama's busy right now. Well, it's not that only Mama's the only one that can do it. It's just Mama's the only one that does it. Oh. <laughs> he just doesn't want her to be, oh, looks like my pasta water is ready. Great hack so that my pasta water is ready. Get my pasta in. This one takes uh, about 12 minutes. I forgot to add my salt. Salt. There we go. Set my timer for my pasta. So I don't forget, I'm going to set it for 11 minutes because whenever you're doing a baked pasta, you always want to make extra care that it is al dente because you do not want it to be mushy after it cooks in the oven. That is, I mean, for me at least, is a no-no. As my family knows, I'm really serious about my pasta texture. Nothing ruins a pasta dish for me when it's mushy pasta. Um, it's just kind of my, my pet peeve. I love the texture of pasta, so I really want it to be, to work out. All right. Everything's cooking. Look at, we've got three st three burners going here. Where did I put my pasta? Oh, here it is. Three burners going. Okay. I need to season this. I haven't seasoned this yet. My my pumpkin saute. I gave a little bit of salt when um, the pancetta was there, but I'm, I need to add a little more. Oh, and we're starting to boil over there, so we need to reduce that. There we go. And add a little more pepper. Love me some pepper. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, that tastes good. Make sure that's done. Just chat. Okay. So we've got our pumpkin butter that continues to cook and reduce and flavor. We have our pasta cooking for our pasta cheesy pasta bake. And we have our sauce. Ooh, yum. We have our sauce for our cheesy pasta bake that is cooking as well. And that is blurping, just like all the pumpkin stuff. That's what you have to watch with the pumpkin is the blurping. All right, so I'm gonna tidy up here. Um, this, once the pasta's ready, this will be ready. I'm actually gonna turn that off a second because it is just not, it's gonna blurp a big old thing. So let me see here. So, we are actually in the process of looking for a new cooktop and simmer is like the most important thing in that cooktop. I want a good simmer. I'm so tired of not having a good simmer. That, that is just, that has become the bane of my existence. All right, so let's tidy up. So too sweet and one savory. And you know, I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking, Hubs? What do you think? I'm thinking Mama's ready for a cocktail. What would you like? I would love, um, I would love that apple cider cocktail, the spiked apple, please. Okay. You want me to make it for you? I would love <laughs> That was a joke. 
We were just talking earlier about how one of the things that attracted me to him was his sense of humor. But I fear, I fear that his sense of humor has gotten has yeah. changed a little bit <laughs> in just, the years. It's just not as good as it once was. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Mm, that is good. That rosemary is everything in that. I mean, because when you think about the flavors, it's pretty simple. You got the pancetta, chicken broth, pumpkin, salt, pepper, some shallot. The rosemary is everything. So do not skip the rosemary. And you could always substitute with a third of the amount using dry. Um, definitely you could do that. If you can get fresh, get fresh. The fresh, it's just, it's everything. It's really, really, really good. Tidy this up. Okay. So while we're waiting for our, let me just check my pasta one more time. While we're waiting for our pasta to be done, I can talk about the upcoming week. It's got something a little special going on this week. So I already posted. If you um, if you are if you subscribe, by the way, if you enjoy content like this, we do. So most of my streams are all about cooking, um, exploring ingredients, exploring different trends. You know, we explore different things we're seeing in restaurants and try to cook them at home. If you like that kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification so you don't miss anything. I create shorts on my everyday cooking and I also um, have these live streams. Sometimes we do cocktails, sometimes we do food reviews. But um, this week, being that it's Thanksgiving and it's the big, it's like the Super Bowl, honey, it's like the Super Bowl of cooking. Um, Thanksgiving, yes, it this in the state's Thanksgiving meal is because it's one of the. If you go traditional with the turkey and all the fixings, it's there's just so many dishes. It's a lot of cooking. It takes a while. Oh, I made you a big one. <laughs> big one. Of course, what do I usually prefer? The small one. The small one. Why do I prefer the small one? Um, I don't know. I just like it like you know. Sometimes, do you wanna, sometimes. Do, no, do you want to know the truth? It's fun. What? I forgot. You forgot because he just, he fixes the big one. So yeah, he gave just, me he gave me the hub size. So this is apple, um, vodka, and a nice healthy squeeze of lime. So our our, our son drinks it with mm -hmm. Fireball. In addition. No, just Fireball. Oh, he doesn't do vodka. There's anymore. no vodka. In it. Oh, I didn't it's, know that. It's Fireball, um, and then the apple cider. Gotcha. I don't think I realized that. I thought it was an addition. Because when I first said to him, I said, try some fireball in it. It already had vodka in it. Oh. Oh, that I didn't know that. First. Yeah. That was when huh. I first said to him, I said, you know, know I said fireball would be good in that because it would bring some spicy cinnamon to I'm it. I'm pretty sure. Well, and and, it, it, and it's, also good with, sure. it's also good with the cinnamon stick in here. But with the big one, you can't put a cinnamon stick because it would, it would fall to the bottom. We don't have any cinnamon sticks mm -hmm. in here, do we? Do we? I do. Nice. I'll, I'll put them out at Thanksgiving. I screwed that up. That's okay. That's okay. So, like I said, we're waiting for our pasta to be done, and then we're going to add it to our sauce, and we're going to sprinkle cheese on top and put it in the um, the air fryer to cook. Meanwhile, I'm going to get it warmed up because our pasta should be done soon. So I'm going to preheat my air fryer, which is always a good idea to do with your air fryers. One thing that would be nice on here if you wanted to embellish this is add a little bit of breadcrumbs also, uh, in addition to the cheese. I'm not going to do that today. The recipe doesn't call for it, but that's always good to get that crunchy texture at the top. But this is just such a yummy, um, delicious pasta. Now to veg it up, because we do have vegetable, obviously, with the pumpkin, right? Do you, but, me, you don't want me to feed her, right? Not yet, no. I gave her a big old treat, like her, the big one. Um, but to veg it up, I did get from the store, because one thing Ina Garden always says is sometimes you just need to, you know, when you're making stuff, I was going to be cooking a lot this afternoon, and so she said sometimes you just have to buy some good stuff too to kind of take the pressure off yourself. So I was not going to do the veg today since I was doing three different recipes. And so um, I got some already roasted Brussels sprouts, and when our pasta first comes out of the oven, while we are probably tasting it and burning our mouths, but while it's supposed to be resting for a few minutes, I'm gonna warm up the Brussels sprouts. So that's what we'll have on the side. 
So it'll be a nice well-rounded meal with some healthy pasta as well as some Brussels sprouts. And I love Brussels sprouts. And I'm gonna warm those up because that is not obviously oven friendly. I think I'm just gonna put some of these in here. So these are little air fryer dishes that I got and, and they came with these little parchment papers, which were adorable. And they fit, which is nice. And I'm going to use this cool. for my Brussels sprouts for an easy cleanup because you are such a good sport about, you know, um, all the cleanup you do with that air fryer because the air fryer is wonderful, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean up. It's not that it's hard to clean up, but it's just there's the basket and then the, the bottom drum. It's just, it's just like, and then you got to figure out where it's going to dry. And so those are already, thing. those are already cooked, yeah, huh? Yeah, are already cooked. From our great, our great place Wegmans that we love. Mm, tasty. Hey, would you do me a favor, by mm -hmm. the way? Would you um, put that in the baggie, the diced pancetta? Because that doesn't have a lid. I'm gonna take some of this. I don't know that we need all of this. So put some of these in here. Warm these up. Let's see how they are. Oh, they are good. Mmm. 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 A well placed shortcut is a lifesaver. Gosh, those are good. All of our pumpkin tastes great. That, did you taste that pumpkin sauce? You should taste just the sauce to see and give some feedback to our audience. That tastes amazing. Which, uh, which that one? That tastes amazing. The pumpkin butter is really getting flavorful. Taste, um, just get, use that little spoon that was there. And just take a little taste of that sauce before you add the pasta. Which sauce? Really that one? The savory sauce. And then you can use the other end for this. Oh, that's good. Just checking the time. Okay, my first, my second timer is, hmm, I wonder which timer is which. That's got to be the pasta. So I realized I didn't keep track of which timer was which. Okay, let's try the pasta. We'll figure this out. That's hot. Just throw the pinchetta in one of the drawers? Yes, please. You don't even need to have a big spoon to just add the flavor yet. Careful, it's hot. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? Man, there's a lot of dips. Yeah, well that's, like I said, we'll probably, we'll be freezing. Or maybe I'll give some um, as a gift. Maybe they'll be like, that's what'd be nice to give some people good. to take home. Make it nice, like at their, at their um, spots on the table. Get some little canning jars and put it in. Wouldn't that be nice? It's a nice idea. Do you, you like them? What's that? Do you like both flavors? I do. Okay. Yeah, they great. All right. Very well done. Good. So we're going to be adding the pasta momentarily. I think, I think it's right. So I'm just going to add my pasta right here into my sauce. Whoops. Got some little runners. Okay. We need 
use this. Make some pasta that's harder to get out. To get that in. Oh my goodness, this is like watching paint dry. Where's my... to be left. Oh, wow. Can I just dump this real quick? I won't dump it in there. Thank you. Just so it can cool. Good. One second. Let me just put this here to cool. That'll be hot. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to gently fold in my pasta into my pumpkin sauce. Again, so sometimes people feel like when you're making a pumpkin pasta like this, that you're trying to mimic mac and cheese because it's orange. That is not what we're trying to do here. We're actually, we're trying to give you a great, yummy pasta experience. Um, that's what I'm positive Gina's intent was at Skinny Taste. But make it healthy. The pumpkin makes it very healthy. But we have flavor. There's savory notes. We're adding some cheese. Turn that off. And turn that off. We're adding some cheese, a couple pieces that got lost. And give you that pasta cheesy experience. But make it healthier. And that's all we're trying to do here. Alright, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going so to how much cheese powder. is in there? So there's, initially there was three tablespoons, and then there's a half cup that goes on top mixed with um, about a quarter cup of um, pecorino, a half cup of mozzarella. Yeah, okay. cup of so I'm going to use this. I didn't realize there was that much. Mm -hmm. but, but mac and cheese has right, a right, ton right. of cheese in it. But again, this is this is meant. So I, so someone who loves pasta, I love pasta. So having this dish, it's meant to give you that pasta experience, but health is healthy. You you're using whole wheat pasta, so you're getting a great fiber hit. You're getting fiber um, and nutrients and vitamins from the pumpkin, right. um, and you're getting you know some of your vitamin D from the cheeses you're using, but this is not, this is this has so much more healthiness to it than I, as much as I love classic mac and cheese, this is much a much healthier option. Um, and so that's what we're just trying to do. We're just trying to create an experience that is delicious, pasta worthy, but healthier. And we tried this when she came out with the recipe. Oh, here's my cheese. So this I mixed a half cup of mozzarella with a quarter cup of pecorino, and I'm just sprinkling this on top. Oh, she already mixed it. Okay. No, you, well, yeah. So, and you are, you put like three tablespoons actually in the sauce. So I'm going to spread that out in a second. Let me just get this. There we go. Spread this out so we can get all over the edges. And so this cheese on top then helps give you that crispiness, that, crispiness. that like that cheese pull on the top. I just dip that in there. Okay. So it gives you that yumminess. And now this is going in our preheated um, air fryer. So if it's a regular oven, it'd be 375. For my air fryer, I'll do 350. And this would go in a regular oven for 25 to 30 minutes. But for us, it'll be 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Put that in. Go. I kind of have to drop it in because it's quite near the edges. So I'm going to get mine on and go. Can I take that pan and put some water? Absolutely. So I was thinking about. I know. So I'm going to set it for 15 minutes and then I'm going to check it. All right? I'll get that. There we go. Mmm. What's that drink? The drink is awesome. It's awesome. 
So I'm going to check my pumpkin butter. I just checked my bread. My bread wasn't done yet. My pumpkin butter. It's getting close to done because it definitely has gotten thicker. But I'm going to... It's hard because in my pot, I have a lot of, you know, it's, it's a lot of pumpkin in there. If you want this to cook more quickly, you could do it in a skillet that would allow it to cook more quickly. I was just managing the space here. In fact, I'll put this right there so you can see. Um, this, one second. There you go. Um, so you can see it's kind of holding its shape when you run your thing down, but I just think it needs to get a little bit more. A little bit more. It certainly tastes delicious. Make no sure. mistake about that. Yes, sir. There is nothing wrong with the taste whatsoever. Okay, those. I'm sorry, I know it's gotten a bit messy. There's pumpkin everywhere. Pumpkin everywhere. <laughs> That's why I felt it was necessary to start. Position. You are my favorite kitchen witch. Yeah. All right. Substitute that one there for something else. <laughs> Only when you're being grumpy. So you can see why I'm moving it off because it, it's going to make those big blurps there. Those that you can see in the camera. There we go, that's helpful, okay. And then this just needs to be rinsed. Um, here, I'll do this, let me do this. So, I think I digressed. So when I was talking before, I was mentioning that, about Thanksgiving um, here in the States. So I was gonna do a stream this week, uh, one of our takeout try and buys, which we really enjoy doing those, highlighting places around Philly that are great for takeout, um, and trying some different dishes there, and really enjoyed that, and we love highlighting the Philly businesses. Oops, one second. But when I looked at this week, while I did say to the hubs that on Wednesday we're gonna need some takeout, I actually thought, I don't want my stream to be about a review that day, because really on everyone's mind, is going to be, at least in the States here, is going to be Thanksgiving. So instead, um, prior to eating dinner on Wednesday, I'll be doing a lot of cooking, a lot of prep for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be changing my schedule, and instead of doing a try or buy, I'm going to um, just turn on the live stream. I'm not going to have recipes below. Certainly I can chat and answer questions. But I'm just giving you a glimpse as to what I do the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You know, different things I'm preparing, what I'm cooking, and we can talk about Thanksgiving. Um, we can share some tips um, and our experiences. So that is what Wednesday will be. So it will not be a try and buy. It'll actually be a little peek into my Thanksgiving preparations. Okay, so now I'm going to check my bread because my I set my timer for five more minutes. I'm going to go get a, what is it called? Um, toothpick to see how things are going. Oh, they look beautiful. This one looks a little jiggly. This is what's always hard. It's like, yeah, that one's definitely not ready. So my one of my right is definitely not ready. My one of my left is close to ready. So I'm going to take that off and put that for another five minutes. But I'm going to check so, one, one second. I'm going to check the one on the left in just a couple minutes. So when you do the toothpick, what are you what are you looking for? You see, there's goop there. I'll show you. Yep. So do you see the goop there on let me? So if you if you put it in and there's something on it, put there. Wait. That it's not right. See the goop on that toothpick on my cupboard there? That you don't want. You want a clean. Oh no, I got it. No, it, it, you want a clean toothpick because that tells you that the quick bread is fully formed. There's nothing battery still left there. So that's what you're looking for. So remember when I had filled them, my plain pumpkin bread was a little lower. 
than the one with chocolate chips. That's the one that I think is near ready. That's the one that I'm, I'm gonna check again in two minutes. The thing you don't want, so this is what I'll tell you about quick breads. No one wants a dry quick, quick bread, that is for sure. But no one wants a wet quick bread. Like, people love, um, you know, uh, gooey brownies. You don't want gooey quick breads. You want your bread to be completely cooked. So for me, in all the years I've cooked any kind of quick bread, from banana bread to pumpkin bread, cranberry orange bread, you know, you name it, whatever, I, if I'm at all worried that it's not cooked, I cook it for a few minutes longer because the, the, you, can't, you can't fix it if, it if you end up taking out, cooling it, cutting into it, and it's got like battery parts. You can cut around it, but that just is a big bummer. So, um, and when you're just talking about a few more minutes, now you don't want it to go, like that one does not need 10 more minutes. It probably doesn't even need five more minutes, but I wanna just keep my eye on it. The other one needs at least five more minutes. You know, so that's kind of what you do. I always try to, when I'm checking quick breads, I go in five minute increments. Um, like I said, the, oh gosh, it smells so good. Do you smell the pasta? Can you smell the pasta? Oh my goodness, like the rosemary and the cheese and that really smells amazing. Everything smells good. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I'm about quick breads. So I am gonna check that other one in just one more minute and see what it's doing. So next week, it's all about Thanksgiving. And then the weekend after that, I completely forgot. So I can't remember what I'm doing next weekend. So again, you if you aren't following me yet on Twitter, please check out Philly Philly Live on Twitter because I post my November schedule right at the top. I pin it so that you can see it and you can see everything that's happening through the end of November. And we, gosh, before we know it, I'm going to have to put my new schedule for December, which is so exciting because it's a holiday schedule. So there'll be lots of fun different recipes and cooking going on there. But can you believe that it's what it is? Like we're on the back end of November already. And by the way, I don't know how it is where you are, and hopefully, I know a lot of parts of our country have gotten quite a bit of snow, but where we are right now, it's cold. And t today was what, in the 30s? Which is yeah, definitely well, below it's normal. Like right now it's 32, it feels like it's windy, so it feels yeah. like it's so I'm going to check the other quick bread, the one that I thought was near done, and I'm going to see, see what's going on here. And I'm going to, wait a second, I'm going to show you what I would do. One second, sweetie. So this is what I would do. I've already put the toothpick in there, and I'm going to get another one, but I'm also going to do a touch test. Oh, see, now that's what I want. Okay, so what I'm tr checking out here is, like, the, the top of the other one, this part wasn't even for firm. This all feels very firm. Now I'm gonna go, go in with my toothpick. And you go in the middle, you go in the biggest part. And you go down deep. And this, let's see, right over there. That's what you want, totally clear toothpick. All right, this, this fella is done. Let me get my other. This one's gonna cool. For 10 minutes and we're going to flip it out and let it cool on a rack the rest of the way. Okay, I'll put this over here. Very, very nice. The other one I will check in just a minute when the timer goes off. Get my chips put away, tidy up a couple of these things. I'm going to check on my pumpkin butter and see how it's doing. All right. Let's see if you give it a little stir. I don't know if you all noticed, but the color has changed. The texture has gotten smoother. So let's do the test. I mean, it's almost there. I just feel like it needs just a little bit more. I will say that for the pumpkin butter, you really can't overcook it. You could burn it, so you never want it to burn, but you can't. You're just concentrating. You're just making it thicker. You're just intensifying the flavor. So, um, you know, I think on the original recipe that I had found when I was looking for it years ago, it says um, 30 minutes. I think it takes longer than 30 minutes. And that's why the crock pot might be a nice way to do it because it can just sit and cook for a while. So let's check the other one. Let's see how the other guy's doing. Um, oh. Let's 
show you what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, I'm pushing in. It's firmer than it was five minutes ago. But I'm just, yeah. Uh, that's feeling a little loose and, oh, yeah. So that's loose. We'll put it there. You can see there's a little layer of batter there. So I'm going to do it for another five minutes. I don't know that it'll, I think it might need five minutes, um, but I'm definitely putting in for five minutes. I don't think it'll need more. I think five minutes will do it. Whoops, I don't need 50 minutes. Let's just do five. But I'll, you know, one of the things I'll say for if you are um, a beginning cook, these are the things that I think intimidate cooks sometimes, home cooks, is this, is it done, is it ready? And so I'm hoping that if you are a beginner cook or someone that doesn't bake a lot, maybe it's just that you cook savory things and things on the stove all the time, but you're just not a baker, that maybe these tips will help you take the fear out and just know that you, you, can, you can tell by looking, you can tell by touching. There's like different ways to kind of make sure that that quick bread, if you will, is all ready. And you can use that same technique with cakes, um, cupcakes, things like that too. So you can see why I usually ask for a smaller glass because as delicious as this cocktail is, I get distracted and I'm still like, I have just barely put an inch into it. It is good though, it's very yummy. All right, so we have four minutes left in our pasta. I think, well, let me show you. Remember they talk, if you bring, you bring you, your spoon across, it kind of leaves that alleyway, see how that alleyway, I mean, it's still a liquid-ish, but watch, let me smooth it. So I'm gonna show you here, look in the camera. See how it kind of leaves that alleyway there? I, I think it's, I think it's done. And it tastes delicious. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm just gonna let it sit there. Just let it sit there and cool. I'm gonna move this, take this guy off. There we go, okay. All right, and then now we're just waiting for our pasta. Our pasta should be done soon. Let's get our plate ready. This. Thank you for doing the dishes, by the way. No, but I appreciate that. I'm just gonna clean this plate so that we can use this instead of dirty anything else. Use this for our pasta. smells good and the thing to remember whenever you're baking pasta and then you're you know and when you've already cooked everything that goes in it you're just really you're just helping it kind of come together finish off and then you want that crispy crunchy top there's nothing in our pasta that we put into our air fryer that needed to cook meaning like it didn't need there wasn't like a meat that needed to cook through or something like that everything was cooked we just wanted to kind of get in that hot tub, get to know each other, spread flavor, and then have a crispy top. That's what we were aiming for. So I think when you're talking about savory cooking, a lot of times there's a lot less worry because you're not worried about something being done and, or you know being underdone when you get it out. Things like baked pastas, they're a lot more forgiving. So um, I see we have two minutes left in our pasta, and when the pasta comes out, I'm gonna put because we already bought pre-made roasted uh, Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna put the Russell, the Russell, the Russell Brussels sprouts, the roasted Brussels sprouts into the air fryer um, to warm up while we are tasting the pasta. With this pasta, it is best, just like most baked pastas, to let it sit for five or 10 minutes um, before you eat it. Plus, it'll be piping hot, but we like to burn our mouths here on Philly Philly, so we are gonna be tasting it pretty quick out of the oven. We will bring it here, though, so you can see it and see how beautiful it is. You can make a space for it. I'm gonna get our forks. And I also am gonna turn out our first pumpkin bread that we've taken out. Let me see. 
see how our pasta looks because we got to turn out our pumpkin bread. We're going to be checking our other pumpkin bread in a minute. Oh my goodness. You, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This looks amazing. Okay. All right. Now not to burn myself getting it out. Okay, so what helps me in this situation, because I've really maximized the space, is I need to like get a spatula in here to get this started. Oh my word. This looks this is the thing that air fryers do. They give you maximum browning on top. I just okay, that's not working. Let me see. Ah, there we go. This works better. Maximum browning. Let me show you that. Maximum browning. So all of our pasta is browned. I'm going to put this here to sit for a second. I'm going to put my Brussels sprouts in and get these brown. Let's see. Um, You're going to cut into that, uh, that bread, right? And I'm going to check my other bread that's in there. Because I'm a cook, I can do this, by the way. What am I going to do? Hey. Oh, do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Wanted, I didn't like my cheese that brown. So if you were doing this in the air fryer you do, and your children do not want that brown, you could always cover it with foil, take it out for like the last few minutes. It'll brown somewhat. So I'm gonna check my bread here much better. Yeah, we are good. We are good. So now this guy is going to cool for 10 minutes. My other one I'm gonna turn out so you can see how, how it looks. So I'm going to show you a responsible way to do this. I will not tell you that sometimes I just use my hand because my hand is asbestos hand and doesn't really feel the pain of heat because it's gotten burned so many times. I need my other little finger. Oh. You know where my little hot pad is? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So what you can do, you can take this off. See how lovely it comes off because we used our parchment paper. See our parchment paper? You just peel it off. And then you take your the rack and you put it on the opposite side. Actually, I'm going to go like this because I'm going to be putting another one on there. No, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to have to move it by hand. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. I talk to myself all the time, don't I, sweetie? Yes. There we go. And there is our regular pumpkin bread. Perfectly cooked, beautiful. A little, a little well, -known, not well-known fact, but a little thing that I'm not sure if this will be um, controversial, but on our quick breads, especially um, pumpkin and banana, we like our breads once it's cool, it goes in the fridge. And now I don't serve it fridge cold. I bring it out to room temperature. I feel like with pumpkin and banana bread, there's something special that happens. After you've cooked it, you put it in the fridge. It somehow becomes more moist or something. It is so, to me, so delicious when it is, and I don't know why, I've just always felt that way. There's something about the texture that I like about quick breads being stored in the fridge, and then you take them out when it's time to eat them. So you have to let me know if that's how you feel or if you feel differently. Okay, I'm going to get a wedge out for this beautiful pasta bake. I have a great utensil for that. I think I'm going to use first a knife. Okay, so here's our pasta.
So this would serve for get that. Oh, nice. There we go. My goodness. Mmm. Yum yum yum. Okay. Let me show you. We've got pumpkin everywhere. Pumpkin bread, pumpkin pasta. You can come over for the tasting, dear. Here is our cheesy baked pumpkin pasta. It's that crispy topping. It's gonna be hot, so be careful. With the whole wheat pasta, again, you could use regular if you prefer. Mm. This would actually be good, a good side on Thanksgiving. You know? Yeah, could be. This would be a good side on Thanksgiving. But whoops, you don't need that. What? Oh, but uh, if someone's good. vegetarian and you don't do the pancetta, good point. You know? Yeah. Very yummy, and especially the crispy top. And that would be our Brussels sprouts. Let me go grab those. Mmm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. And because we went to one of our favorite markets that has these delicious already made Brussels sprouts, we mm. have an easy side dish. Turn off my oven. We have an easy side dish that we can just have. They're gonna be hot. Wow, that's good. Mm. So hot. I knew these were gonna be good. So hot. Woo. I don't think I want to eat it. It's good. This is perfect. This will be so yummy together. Cheers. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for all of our pumpkin three ways. Let me know the pumpkin dishes you love the hits that you have with your family down below. And again, like, subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. Thank you for joining me tonight and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family if you live in the States. And to everyone else, have a great week. Thank you all.